uh, to define conflict and discuss the difference between good and bad conflict. So, uh, according to the Oxford Dictionary, conflict is a situation in which people, groups, or countries disagree strongly and are involved in a serious argument. Uh, there's also another academic explanation which, is, which says conflict is an expressed struggle between at least two interdependent parties who perceive inco incompatible goals, scarce resources, and interference from others in achieving their goals. So the difference, differences between uh, good and bad conflict. Uh, well, conflict, as we all know, is often perceived as a very negative thing. However, there can be positive and negative sides of it. But, and therefore it means that not all conflict needs to be, to be solved. So, um, bad conflict is also known as uh, catabolic uh, conflict. So this word catabolic, it, it's used in the scientific uh, world, meaning to break down. So this type of conflict is usually uh, chronic uh, unresolved issues of confusion uh, in role identity, uh, communication imbalances of power and duties, and perceived injustice duties, and also it can be uh, caused by a history of improperly handled disputes and of exclusion. I hope I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> uh, second, good conflict is known as anabolic uh, conflict, meaning it builds you up. Anabolic means it builds you up. So these ones are typified by open discourse, honesty, investigation and introspection of key processes and players, acceptance of diverse uh, ideas and collaboration. So it involves uh, open communication. So we can, in this classroom, have a conflict, but we are discussing the issue. It's not like it's not bad. You just disagree with me, and we are having an open, honest um, discussion about something. Uh, yes. So, uh, like I said, good conflict is in your face and it's open, but bad conflict is very subtle and it may take a long time to grow and show itself. Um, good conflict results in constant innovation and collaboration based in uh, open discourse and needs uh, people not to be emotional about the comments made. Whereas bad conflict comes as a result of previous good uh, conflict opportunities being stifled or never ceased, uh, or the communication is broken. So what that means is that a bad conflict can result in, when we are in this discourse, I'm trying to raise a point, and then someone says, keep quiet or something. And then now I'm holding that grudge. Now I have beef with you because you. Now it's yes. <laughs> um, yes. So what are the causes? Of conflict. Yes, so kind of number two says identify the four causes of conflict as described in the Bible and read the following passages for assistance. Because of time, I'm not going to read the passages. Uh, but we're going to read Acts 15, verse 22 to 30. It is where uh, there's conflict over the issue of circumcision. So the reason for uh, conflict there was because of differences over ideas and there was lack of info information. That means something was missing, incomplete or ambiguous. And uh, the lack of close communication uh, and, trans and yeah, transformation of very important information. So the second one, uh, we find it in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 31 which is uh, the verse that talks about unity and diversity in one body. There was, we are all one body with many parts. That's the passage. <coughs> so the reason for conflict there could be diversity of perspective. 
So it means uh, you might not understand your role and therefore there they, they will be conflict. You want to do a role that's, that's okay. not meant for you. So there's competing or uh, goal or different, yes. So the third one is found in Genesis 13 verse 1 to 12. This one is the more apparent uh, conflict where there where Abraham and Lot had to divide because uh, their headsmen were fighting over the place in them. So the reason for um, conflict there was greed over access to resources. So there were scarce resources and when resources become limited, it increases the wants of the individuals in a group, motivating people to compete to achieve these objectives. So the fourth one is found in James 4, verse 1 to 3. Uh, the heading there is Pride Promotes Strife. So here, the reason for conflict is pride and the desire for pleasure. And I noted here that it's also a, a clash of personal values and wants that leads to conflict. So uh, Paul uh, details <coughs> there that the reason people are fighting is because they don't really want to uh, do what God is, is commanding, essentially. So that's why it's creating a conflict in the church. Like now, maybe people, the church instructs that we do this, and then you don't want to do it because you don't really want to change it, then it creates conflict in the church. Yes, so um, requirement number three says identify each segment of the slippery slope of addressing conflict and discuss examples of each type from the Bible and your own experiences. So the slippery slope. Uh, this slippery slope is just examples of ways you try to address um, conflicts. When you are faced with conflict, what are the ways people uh, deal with it? So number one is escape uh, and denial. So under escape and denial, we have uh, the blame game. So I think this one is an easy, another easy Bible example, which is found in Genesis 3, verse 11 to 13, when Adam is confronted with sin, Adam said to God, you gave me this, you gave this woman to me and she gave me the fruit of the tree, so I ate it. So uh, Adam uh, blames the woman for his sin. And and actually blames God. Oh yeah, he blames, <laughs> he blames God, but yeah, the woman, I guess, yes. And, and then he also blames the snake. Yes, the snake took me. So, um, yes, yeah, so under that, we can also each have our personal examples of when we try to blame our situation on other people. Not so, taking responsibility. Yeah, not taking responsibility when you've been caught. You say, no, it's because the president says that you do it when, you know, example. So each of you will, will have your own personal example of uh, how you think this blame game works. So there's also uh, running away. So a personal example could be that a parent can't deal with the pressures of life, so they just run away from their, their family. So yeah, that's how they run away. And another example in the Bible is found in Genesis 3 verse 9 to 10, where the Lord said, uh, it's still uh, about Adam. So they ran away again after committing sin. The Lord said, where are you? And the man answered, I heard you walking in the garden. I was, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So instead of facing that situation, uh, Adam hid. So another way people deal with uh, conflict is to attack. This is the, the most common one. Uh, so under attacking, we have fighting. I think this is easy. Where um, you, you have a situation, you 
you and this person are not, uh, you're disagreeing on something and you resort to physical uh, fighting. So also in the, in the Bible, I will use uh, the example of David and Goliath. There was a conflict between the Philistines and the Israelites, mostly from the Philistines and the they resolved the, the conflict by, by even though we were not so much of a fight. Yes. And then uh, another way is gossip. So you and your friend have this uh, conflict or beef or whatever. Your friend resorts to gossiping about you and destroying your reputation in order to, you know, that's how they face that situation. Uh, I couldn't really find the, a biblical example, except uh, there's, there's one in Jeremiah 20 verse 10 where uh, Jeremiah is talking that people are, are spreading yes. So, yeah, but you can maybe find other examples, and maybe you also have personal examples of uh, when you were faced with gossip or you gossiped about another person you had a conflict with. Yes, and then there's also another one, it's put down. Put down is also very related to gossip, but the, the counter is we are, we are talking, but I, I want to put you down. That means I say words that are going to make sure. Yeah, you are. Yeah, pull her down syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in, the, uh, in the Bible, another example is where Goliath insults the, the nation of Israel in order to make them feel small. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, and also the Yes, and also that. So uh, <coughs> it's making someone feel small, so that's the way you are taking that. So uh, the third one, another way of dealing with um, the conflict is consolation. So this is a very positive way of uh, looking at it. So first, you can overlook. Overlook is simple. You see a situation and you don't, you, you decide to ignore it, basically. You don't entertain it and stuff. It could be unhealthy because then sometimes people hold uh, resentment. But if you overlook, you might, it must not be in your mind. You must completely ignore that situation. And number two, talk it out. So I uh, could not find a biblical example of uh, someone who ignored in the Bible, but maybe you guys can help. Who is not? Joseph and the brother. No, no, the... Oh, you think Joseph oh, overlooked? Oh, I think you're talking about the joke it out. No, I'm, I was talking about overlooking. I could not find like a, a precise biblical example of someone who overlooked the situation, but maybe you guys could help. Uh, but I think there's a lot of personal examples of Someone is saying something and it is And then the second one is talk it out. That is, you and the person sit down and talk about the problem and try to see if you can find a resolution to it. Uh, so, sorry, I don't know. On this one of, of, of ignoring, uh, if you look at the, the trial of Jesus, there are so many instances where instead of answering to a question, he keeps quiet. Good example. I just need to find a precise verse, but yes, in the Bible, I think Jesus used this tactic a lot, overlook, and then talk it out as well. God calls us to talk about issues with Him, and so on. So you also need to, as a requirement, give a personal example and also a biblical example of such a situation. Number three is negotiate. So negotiate means you, you need to find a compromise, right? So uh, you you are talking to this person. Oh, I I don't like it because of this and this and that. Uh, you hurt me this and this way. How can we make it better? Then try to to see how we can find a, a compromise. So negotiate. So the fourth requirement is. Reverse role play a conflict from your own life and identify where you are on the slippery slope and what possible 
constellation options you might try. So I did say constellation options are the, great, the positive uh, options that we are recommended to use in solving conflict. So attacking is not good. Uh, what's this? Yeah, attacking is not good and escaping and denying something is also not good. So you need to look at a situation in your life, probably you're in a current conflict at work, at school, at home with your friends. Look at that situation. How can you, which consolation um, uh, tactic can you use in order to solve that and make peace like we are required to? So that is it. Each person will take a situation. That is the requirement. I cannot speak to situation. Any questions? Wow. Thank you. <laughs>